Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Somehow I managed to go an entire month without making a video again, but here in the U.S. we've got the uh, Thanksgiving holidays and now we have all the winter holidays coming up. And this time of year it is very busy, especially if you're a crafter and you're making your money with home and handmade goods. So today I want to show you how to make a small riveting fixture. If you're a smith and you're looking to do something like, let's say, making tongs, making rivets is one of the key things that you're going to need to hold those tongs together. So let me show you the jig. All right, guys, what I used for my die is just a chunk of hex stock, solid stock. And um, what you want to do is locate your rough center, drill a pilot hole all the way through your piece. And then come in with your final size. This is the size of your stock. And drill down until you get the desired depth for making your rivets. This is my rivet stock. That's how much that I'm going to need to spread the head of the rivet. Now, some of you may have noticed this hole in the side. You don't have to be elaborate or fancy when you're making these uh, these dies, but um, you know you could pretty much make them to however you like. What I did is I took a piece of all thread that I had laying around. It was just a short chunk left over, and I spun it down on the lathe. Used the same size drill bit. Uh, this is three eighths. To spun that down on the lathe, and I'm actually going to weld myself a little handle on just so I have something to grip and the all thread makes it really nice and solid and it's not going to slip out of my hand or move around at all. So I'm going to weld this jig up off camera and then I'm going to heat up a small piece of 3 8 and show you how it works. Alright YouTube, once your die is made, uh, other than your hammer you're going to need a punch uh, just in case the rivet gets stuck inside the die which will happen sometimes. That pilot hole that we drill all the way through as long as it's about the same size as your punch, you can use that to extract the rivet and it makes a really easy job getting it out. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out, some people may wonder why I chose to use hex stock. Um, hex stock is nice because if you're working on an anvil, everybody knows if you have punches and chisels and things, sometimes they like to roll off your anvil. Well, if I make this out of round stock and I lay it like this, it's going to want to flop over or you know, I don't have to worry about it rolling around. Even if it didn't have a handle on it, I can set it down on any one of its points and it's not going to roll off the handle, which is kind of nice. But uh, that's why I like using hex stock. Plus, I just like the look of it. I mean, it does look kind of cool. So let me turn on the forge and I will get to making rivets.
right, YouTube, just so you could see what I had going on here, you may have noticed I was just punching the rivets right through the hardy hole. Uh, I'm not a fan of having things going flying around the shop, so uh, <laughs> I try to catch these when I can. Um, this is just basically a big can. I don't even remember what came in. It was something that we had for Thanksgiving. I think it might have been yams or something. But it's just a big can, and it's big enough to um, catch anything that comes out of either the pitcher hole or the hardy hole. And, you know, like many of you, I don't want to modify my anvil to, to do this, so all it is, I've got a, a little block of wood, and this is a, um, this is one of those magnetic strips for holding sockets, and, you know, it does a pretty good job holding it in place by itself, but with the wood block underneath it, I know it's not going to fall or go anywhere. Um, these magnets really aren't that strong, but eh, that's all I did there. All right, YouTube, here are some of the tongs that I made yesterday. Um, I made about eight pairs of tongs yesterday, and I know that sounds like a lot, especially for me being a beginner. I did not make these tongs in the traditional sense. Um, these tongs were actually cut out uh, from about here down on my plasma cam. I programmed a pattern into the machine, cut them out, shaped them in the forge how I wanted them, and then welded on the reins. These are not traditionally made, but uh, this time of year, I've been so busy, I haven't been able to make tongs on my own. Um, I don't have time to go through the whole learning curve of the process of making tongs, and I just needed something functional that I could use immediately. Um, and that's what allowed me to get them done so quick. Uh, this is a pair of bolt tongs. Uh, same deal. The majority of this was cut out on the plasma cam and then the reins are welded on. But uh, all the rivets, that's what I'm making the rivets for. You can see there. And then I just made a pair here. These are for just holding round stock. You can tell by the nose. Very simple, very friendly, and you know, like I said, they're not traditionally made, but they will work. They will get my job done. Um, I am not going to be selling these. Uh, on the internet, so don't get your hopes up on that either. If you're interested in this type of a thing, there's a gentleman. Um, this is his product. He calls them Quick Tongs. I honestly cannot remember his name. I will put a link to his website in my description. Um, I know technically, compared to what I do, he's almost a competitor to me, but uh, you know, he's another metal product guy. Uh, this was his idea. I bought a pair of his Quick Tongs just to see how they were put together. And I can make them on my own. If you can make them on your own, go ahead. But I still, you know, went out and purchased his product um, to get an idea of, you know, what he used and what he did. Uh, so once again, these are called Quick Tongs. You can do a Google search for them. I am not going to be selling these. Uh, like I said, this is someone else's idea. And I'm not going to take food off of his table. Uh, that just, you know, wouldn't be right. There are uh, there are just some things you should not do. Don't go out and steal other people's ideas. If you can implement them in your own shop, you know, fine, but don't go out and, you know, take money from people that should be going to the guy who, who created the product. So, once again, those are the quick tongs. And you will get um, both halves, so you can make a complete pair of tongs with a rivet from this guy. Uh, really nicely made and if you're in the market for something like this or you want to take the shortcut and go ahead and, and do something like this I will link the description. Alright YouTube so there it is very very simple tool it's basically just a die with a handle on it uh, and the handles optional so I hope you picked up a new tip or a trick or something you could use in your shop but uh, that's pretty much the end of the video uh, don't have much more to show I didn't go into the drilling of the holes and things like that because you've seen me use a drill press before. It's kind of you know redundant after a while. Plus, you know you don't need to spend 20 minutes sitting in front of a video to get the basic idea or the gist of it. Um, I am going to try to get in front of the video camera a little bit more this month. Uh, November was a complete wash. It seems like it was October or Halloween yesterday. But uh, things have been really busy. Uh, I wanted to get videos up. In fact, to do this today. Uh, I started at 5.15 in the morning, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on a dangerous path here. I'm making a video without my first cup of coffee, so um, I need to go in the house and correct that before I start editing the video. Uh, if you guys want to do me a favor, please leave a couple of comments. If you want to see videos on how to do a certain project, if it's metal related and if it is something I can do, I'd be delighted to do it. Uh, and you know, even if I can't do it immediately, it's a nice thing for me to just be able to write down ideas for future videos 
and keep them put aside and then when the opportunity presents itself I can go ahead and film it and get it out on the web for everybody to see. But uh, if you could take a few minutes to do that, I would greatly appreciate it. So, I'm going to wrap the video here. Uh, this has been Jeff with Dark Moon Metals, and until the next video, see you again soon.